Welcome to Wonderful Works Tours. I will be sending you your tour guide to help you so you don't miss any sightings of the Wonderful Works. We at Wonderful Works like to see the amazing things in creation and to make sure others have a chance to see them as well. All you need to tour with us today is a seat. Do you have one? Next, we'd like to make sure everyone has a perfect view to see. So we do a little test to make sure you do not miss anything. We have a photo we will show you. When you can see the photo clearly, we will send your tour guide in. Here's one view of our photo. How did you do? Did you focus on the details? Here's another view of our photo. How's that? What did you see? Is it getting any better? Ah, here we have a clear view of our photo. Do you see Pastor Scott with a real giraffe over his shoulder and green grass behind them? Oh good, then we're ready. Our adventure can begin. I'm your Wonderful Works Tour Guide, Aaron. I've got the Wonderful Works t-shirt on, and I've even got my name tag, so you know that it's Aaron here. And I've got a special part of our tour right here, the Wonderful Works of the Lord God Almighty. We must be intentionally focusing on what the Lord has done, is doing, and will do. That's right, the wondrous works are found in several places. Number one being creation shouts in all of the glory of what God has done. Science reveals the intricacies of what God has created. Our eyes show us just how amazing things really are. But could we possibly get an example of that? Thank you, tour guide Aaron. I'm fast talking Aaron, and I'm back to talk to you about God's wonderful creation. In fact, I've got a book here based on stories just from the Bible itself. And if I open up this first page, you'll see the creation of the Garden of Eden. We've even got everybody in there with the animals. That's right, we've got examples in this fantastic, wonderful book. Here we've got Noah who builds the ark with all the wonderful animals God created on top of it. And he inspired Noah, gave him the idea of just how to even build that ark. A new creation that had not been in the world once before. Here we have Joseph the dreamer, who has this wonderful, wonderful dream. Another creation of God, the ability for us to dream, to see what's going to happen in our mind. Why, thank you, Fast Talking Aaron. It's back to Tour Guide Aaron right now. And we are looking at those wonderful works and where we can find these intricacies. Now, last time we were looking at the creation. Thank you, Fast Talking Aaron, for a great example of that. But where else could we possibly look? Did you know it's actually written down? That's right, in the book. And not necessarily that book, but this one right here. We have our Bible that actually has all the books, letters, and history of the life of the children of God. And how are you one of them by Christ Jesus? I would love to take an example out of this great book on the people that had those life's stories and historical records. Why, thank you there, tour guide Aaron. I'm your button-up shirt-wearing wonderful Aaron that you all know and love from your regular Sunday school. Now, I don't know where this accent came from, Teacher Tina, who's looking at me from off screen, but that's perfectly fine because we're here to talk about these wonderful people that was in the Bible. People that may have dressed just like this gentleman behind me here. He's got the shoulders uh, with the cape flowing down, the shield, the helmet. Those are the old style doing it. In fact, a lot of the stories in the Bible, in fact, all of them, are from a long time ago. That's right. Now, one of my favorite ones here is about Ruth. Now, she wasn't born as an actual child of God, but she got grafted in, married into God's line, and chose to follow God. And because of that, she actually is in the lineage of God. Now, I don't know what Teacher Tina is doing off on the side of the screen here, waving her hands all over the place, maybe wanting to have me show you these wonderful pictures. On this one here, God speaking to Samuel, a young man who actually had God talk to him and call him out and said, I'm going to have you do some stuff for me. Now, there was a weird part here. The puzzle felt like it was missing a piece, so I got distracted there, which is fine, because we'll flip to another page here. And this one's David fighting Goliath. You know, David had the opportunity to stand up against Goliath, who was making fun of God's people. 
That's right. And now the king wanted him to dress up in all this armor. So the king took his armor, put him on David and said, go forth and do this. But David said, you know what? I know how to do this because I've listened to God. And when I was out in the field, I fought a lion and a bear. And this armor wasn't what I was using. I'm going to use what I'm trained in and trust in God to provide me the victory. And that's why we have all these stories that are in the Bible about the people who trusted in God. We're going to turn you back over to tour guide Aaron here, though. You guys have a wonderful day. Well, thank you there, Aaron. We're back here to tour guide Aaron once again. We've been talking about the wondrous works that are found in several places. We're looking intentionally focusing on what the Lord has done, is doing, and will do. And we've talked about his creation and how we get to see his wonderful works in that. And we've talked about him having given us the written history of this creation and the wondrous works that happen in his history. Now we've got at least one more here. It says, in your life. In your life? That's right, in your life. Your life is a testimony to the awesome, wondrous works of God. Do you notice what God has done for you? How about how amazingly and intricately you are made? You know, when you look at how amazingly and intricately God likes to do things, you'll start to notice things you might not have seen before. Now, if you look what I have in my hands here, it looks sort of flat, like this. And a lot of people back in the day used to think that the earth was flat. That was how they actually opinionated on that subject. And... They were wrong. We found this out later because they started to look and focus on the intricacy of how wondrous the world was made. And when they started to focus on how intricate and how wondrous the world was made, they found all of a sudden, why, golly, it's round. The earth is round. And that's right. Ah, I got myself an earth here. They found when they started to focus on what God had actually done, it was a round little planet that in fact was not even the center of the universe like they thought. That's right. They thought the earth was the center of the universe and they found out later we're revolving around the sun. See, when they started to pay attention to intricacies, how wondrous God created things. Now let's take a look for a moment here at something man has created. I'm going to dump out some of these gummies here. Get that out of the way. And I'm going to make sure I take a good look at these here. If I just grab two of these off of here, you might notice that they're all shaped exactly the same. These were printed in a mold to make these gummy candies. You can probably see that the coloration is the same and they're the same shape. They have the same letters printed on them. Why, that's something that came out of the mold. Did you know that you didn't come out of a mold? That's right. You were wonderfully made by the God in heaven. Now look at these two lions. They were both made by the same manufacturer, sold for the same price, using the same materials. Can you notice any differences between these two lions? But that's right, there are differences. And if you focus on the intricacies of how wondrously everything that God has created is made, you'll see that there's slight differences, even though... They're supposed to be the same thing. That way they could sell it to everybody else. Now think about it for a moment here. Have you ever met twins in your life? If you run into a couple of uh, people who look identical on the surface, you might miss out on the intricacies of how wonderful God made them. And you might miss out on the actual differences between them. Now we're going to have a picture up on the screen for you to look at two twins here. Can you see any differences just from looking at them? Now can you imagine that if you got to talk to them, you might even notice some different differences. And that's because God, he is so detailed in the intricacies of his wondrous creation that he not only made all the creation, but he also gave us this book with all the information of all these people who came before us, all these awesome works that he did. And we still get to see his wondrous creation even in this day and age. That's right. And that's why we here at Wondrous to Works Tours have to have a tour guide willing to look closely at the intricacies of God. Hey there, Valor Kids. In your bags this week, you're going to find yourself a word search to find some words in there. And on the back side, you'll notice I have a bunch of Bible verses written out with some blank points in them. And that's actually going to be our Bible reading today. So if you go ahead and grab your adventure Bible, we're going to take a look at these verses of Scripture, and then you can fill them in as we go along. And the first one at the top of that page says, John 15, 5, I am the blank, you are the blank. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So to find out what's missing here, we have to go to John chapter 15 
verse 5. Now, John is in the New Testament. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And I'm going to have my adventure Bible here, and I'm going to open up to John chapter 15, verse 5. Now, if you don't know where that is exactly, don't forget, in the front of your Bible is the table of contents, has the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it even tells you what page they're on. So you can find this one pretty quick. It's on page, if you have the Adventure Bible, 1187. Now, John chapter 15, verse 5. Let's find it here. Now it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, if you're doing this for your first time, go ahead and pause the video. Write those answers into the blanks there. I am the vine, you are the branches. And they are spelled out in your Bible, so you can spell them right there. We're going to continue on to the next one, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, if you check your table of contents, you'll see that it's still in the New Testament, and it's further in than even John. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, if you have your adventure Bible, we're on page 1259, 1259. Now, it says on our sheet, 1 Corinthians 2.14, so let's read that. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. You see, we're starting to have a theme here. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you reign in me and I in you, that's what we're talking about. Staying in God. We've been learning about intentionally focusing on the Lord what he's done, what he's doing, and what he will do. And if you stay in his word, you're going to be able to find out those answers. But let's look at this one here. 1 Corinthians 2.14 The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are... What is our blank word over here? So let's look in our Bible. They can't understand... Now, accept things from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned. Now, that's a fun word there, which means you can't actually find them um, unless through the Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, we're actually not going to be able to see these things that the Holy Spirit is trying to show us. On the next one, we're going to John 14, 26. Now, John is the book we were in the first time, so head back over in that direction. John 14, 26. But the advocate, the blank, blank, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So what God is saying here is if we have the Holy Spirit with us, the Holy Spirit's going to be able to remind us of what God has said to us. And this here is what God has said to us. That's another reason we got to focus on the intricacies of what God has written down for us today. The next one says, Jesus answered, I am the blank and the blank and the blank. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Now, if you're in John 14 for the last one, let's find verse 6, which is on page 1186. 1186. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's why we have to get born into the kingdom of God and get that Holy Spirit because we want to be able to have this conversation with the Father and the Holy Spirit who helps us to understand what he wants us to hear. And our last one on the page here is Matthew 6, 33 through 34. But blank first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about blank. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble 
on uh, of its own. So we're going to head over to Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. So here we go. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, once you've got all these verses filled out, all of those answers are the words that are hidden in the puzzle. Now, there's ten of them. I'd love to see when you find them. Now, they're going to go from left to right, bottom to top, top to bottom, and even at angles as well. Now, there's ten of them hidden in there, and your answers are all on the back. Now, you've got the scriptures here, so if you need to know how to spell them, grab your Bible, and you can write them out. Now, don't forget to send Teacher Tina a copy once you find them all in the word search, because we would love to see how fast you found them. All right, Valor Kids, it's time for the memory verse. Now, let's look at what our memory verse here is. It says, uh, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Now that's right, it's on the back of your crossword puzzle. It's one of the verses we've actually looked at today. Now we're gonna focus on one part of this and it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6, guys, this is Jesus speaking. Now in your bag, you're gonna have yourself a piece of paper to write on. Now you'll see it in there, it's a rectangle shape. And I've been writing a lot in marker and this week I'm gonna be writing in crayon. So I'm gonna get myself a crayon out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and write this out. Now, I do have this next to me because I filled it out, which means I can use it for also helping me on my memory verse. Now, it starts off the first word being I. This is Jesus speaking. So it's a capital I here. Am, A, M. Then the next word, the, T, H, E. Then the next word, way. W A Y. The next word, I'm going to drop down to the next line myself. You'll see it has I am the way at the top there. I'm going to go down and it says and A N D the T H E. Then the next word is truth. T R U T H. I am the way and the truth. The next word and A N D the T H E. And the next word is life. L I F E. I am the way and the truth and the life. Now where was this located? That's right. John J O H N chapter 14 then the colon those two dots and verse number 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14:6. All right, Valor Kids, we've got a craft for you this week. You will need your little bag of goods and this white uh, placeholder right now. Uh, you put the white placeholder out, and that's going to be your workstation. Placemat. Pastor Tina called it a placemat, and she is correct. Now, you're going to take your goods out of your bag. I'm going to pour them out here. First thing I'm going to do is take the glue, <clears throat> set it off to the side. We're not going to be using that just yet. And then you'll notice that you'll have enough letters to spell out Valor Kids. Now I've already got a couple of them here. I'm gonna lay them out on the placemat. You're gonna lay out your Valor Kids and make sure you have them set on a flat surface. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna notice this little bottle here with the three little sponges in here. Now when you open this up, you're gonna pull one of them out and you'll put the cap back on and we'll set the rest off to the side. 
And then the last thing we're going to be doing is taking the little uh, pot of paint here and you're going to carefully open it. Now you can ask adults for help to get the lid off, but once you do, make sure you keep it on a flat surface. And then you take your little sponge on the end of the stick and you're going to just gently put it into the paint. And then after you've got some paint on it, you're going to dab the Valor Kids letters gently getting paint right on there. Now you might get some on your placement and that's perfectly fine because that's what it's there for. And you're going to be painting them by just doing the little dabs of paint on there. Now after you do your letter, first letter, move on to your next letter. I'm on my S right here. And if you uh, run out of paint, you can always get more out of your pot and then go back. And then once you have all of your letters all painted blue and you've done that first pass to make sure they've got blue on them, you're going to take your sponge, set it to the side, we're going to put our lid back on our paint and make sure it's closed all the way now that I've painted all my letters. Then you're going to let that dry for at least one hour. You're going to need to do at least three coats, probably four, to make sure they get that good blue color. We have Teacher Tina. Sometimes we have a timer in the house, either on the oven or the microwave, or mom has a timer, or you may have a timer on your cell phone. And if you know how to use your timer, you can set that timer for one hour. And remember, we don't do things carefully. We do things very thoughtfully. We do things very slowly and considerate. But we don't carry, cast, we cast our cares, we don't carry our cares. That's correct. So I want Master, Ta Master Scott not to have to talk to us about carrying our cares. <laughs> we want to do things very thoughtfully, very methodically, very patiently. So as you're dabbing, you can see Teacher Aaron's already made some mess on there. It's okay. You might even get some on your hands. It's washable according. This is what we sent you right there. So where were you now? Okay. So after that hour is over and you come back to do your next coat, you'll grab your same dopper, uh, open up your paint pot, and you'll do another pass, and you'll do that three or four times to make sure it's got a good coat. Then you're going to want to let them completely dry and come back tomorrow. And then when you come back tomorrow with these, you're going to move on to the next part. So let me shift this to the side here. And what you're going to do is you're going to have the wait, all right, a board like this. Yours will look nice and clean like this one. But Pastor Tina and I have this one here. You'll notice I have Valor Kids already basically all glued on there. I've just got to get my S on there. So I'm going to put the S on my uh, placemat here, and I'm going to take the glue, and I'm going to put enough glue on the back of this, and then glue it on here. And you're going to do that with all of your letters, and put Valor on the top, Kids on the bottom. So I'm going to take my glue, and then I'm going to open it up, and Pastor Tina told me it needs a lot of glue. So I'm going to get a lot of glue on here. The top of the S has a line down on it. That's how you know which part is the top of the S and which part is the bottom. So if you show them the top of the S, it has a straight line up and down on it so you can know which part is the top. And then I'm going to take that S and I'm going to put it onto there and press it down real hard and make sure it's really on there. And then when I'm done gluing, I'm going to put my cap back on my glue and set that to the side. Are we giving this a full day? Full day after you glue all your letters and press them down really hard, make sure you wait, let them sit for a full day and come back the next day. Once you do, you'll have it saying Valor Kids and they'll all stick on there. Now, after you've got your craft all finished, then you can take your memory verse, which we did today, and it says, I am the way and the truth and the life, John 14, 6, and this will fit in that board. You may have to uh, bend it a little bit, it may have a little bit of flex to it, but it will sit right in the middle of the board. It says, Valor Kids, with your memory verse right here. Anything else on that one, Pastor Tina? No, that's the end of our craft. Hope you guys have a lot of fun with this one. And don't forget, whenever you're done with your paint, push it down all the way.
and make sure you take your time. There's no need to rush. 